This is One on One. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. Welcome to a very special edition of One on One. This young lady you're about to see on camera. She was with us 20 years ago when she was a student at yeah. Rutgers University. She's back. Catherine Finney, founder and managing director of an organization called Digital Undivided. How are you doing? I am well. I'm so excited to be back. Well, it only takes 20 years to come right? back. That's I look the <laughs> same, right? You look even better. You were great then. You were a student. <laughs> we were talking about a controversy on Rutgers yes. uh, campus at the time. You come back as a successful entrepreneur. Describe uh, Digital Undivided. What is it? Sure. Well, Digital Undivided is a social enterprise that's focused on getting more urban entrepreneurs into the tech space. So we do a lot of work, not only in the tri-state area, but around the country and around the world in helping urban entrepreneurs, mostly black and Latino entrepreneurs, get into tech. Who came up with this idea? Well, it actually came from me. <laughs> uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, my father was a brewery worker in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mm. The brewery shut down. Did they do beer out there? They did. Just a little <laughs> beer, right? <laughs> he worked at Schlitz, where most people know from Laverne and Shirley. Sure. Um, the brewery shut down. He found himself at a local workforce development course, took a course in computing, fell in love with it, moved my family to Minnesota, got a job at Digital Equipment, became an engineer at Microsoft, and then when he passed away, he was the executive at EMC, which is a data storage yeah. company. And all of that led me to be into tech. I, I was a child during that time period, and I saw the power of tech in transforming my family and my community. It's interesting. But you've also become an entrepreneur in this process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is it... Do you think, well, let me put it this way. Do you think it's particularly challenging or more challenging for minorities and women to enter the high-tech field than it is for the rest of us who happen not to fall into that demographic category? Hmm. I don't think it's necessarily more of a challenge. Well, why do you target that population? Well, I target that population because I don't think we have what is called patterns. So those of us who are involved in the tech space, you hear this word thrown all around a lot, which is that there's a pattern to who's successful. And because of that pattern, and usually the pattern is a 25-year-old young white guy who went to Harvard, MIT, or Stanford, and that's what success is in tech. And if you don't fit into that, identity, then you somehow may not be successful. And those of us from Rutgers, we're not in that? We're not in that list, no. 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 Even though they don't know that we were, that's an Ivy League school? Well, exactly. We know that. We know they just, that. They, they don't, don't know, know that. that. Exactly. Okay, so so you graduated from Rutgers. Yes, I did. But you go into government. You go work in the White House. Yeah. You work for United States Senator Paul Wellstone. Yeah. So you're in government, and well, I, where does this other thing come into your life? Well, after that, I went and got a graduate degree from Yale in epidemiology. Oh, now, now you're bragging. A real Ivy League school. Go ahead. <laughs> and in epidemiology. In epidemiology, yeah, the study of diseases and its impact on populations. And so while I was an epidemiologist, I was traveling a lot, going to great places, but I fell in love. And as a result of falling in love, I couldn't travel as much as I used to, came back, my fiance, who became my husband, suggested that I start a little blog. And this was in 2003 when blogs were like really, really new, way back in the stone ages of, right. of the internet. Um, I started, started a little blog called The Budget Fashionista. The Budget Faci Fashionista. Yes. It was, it's, it's not a little blog anymore. No, no. It grew to be a whole brand, led to a book by Random House. I sold the blog. Um, and did very well for myself and then thought of what was I going to do next. I wanted to do something that was going to impact my community. I wanted to find more people like me who may have wanted to go into this space but didn't know how. They didn't fit that pattern that I mentioned before but knew that they had a great tech idea. And so Digital Undivided was developed and created. When you help folks mm -hmm. and you see them succeed, what do you see? When I help folks and I see them succeed, I really see the future. I see the possibilities. I see how we are changing what is possible. I think you can't be what you can't see. I think with every person that Digital Undivided helps become a successful entrepreneur, that then leads to other people seeing the possibility of becoming a successful entrepreneur. One of the issues in tech right now and why there's so much discussions about diversity is that tech has a marketing problem. It has an image problem. 
everyone that's the face of tech fits that certain pattern. And until that pattern change, until that marketing changes, it's going to be very difficult for other people to see the possibilities for themselves. Be more specific. Are you talking about Mark Zuckerberg? I'm talking about Mark Zuckerberg. You're talking about people who just look like that and that's it? Yeah, and that's it. Young white guys in a hoodie, is that it? Yes, young white guys in a hoodie. And that's not to take anything away from their success. They're amazingly no, brilliant. No, it's a pretty narrow population. But it's a pretty narrow population, a pretty narrow definition. And if you fit outside of that, it can be very hard to see yourself as being a success in that space. So tech needs to change its marketing. We need more people who look like me, mm. more people who look like others who are really successful in this space. You love what you do. I do. It's fun. It's great. So I need to ask you something. Sure. Um, we started a little blog. Yeah. We call Good it Lessons, for you. Lessons in Leadership. Uh, actually, uh, it's going to be a book out of the same name. So I have to ask you this. Congratulations. We're asking the most interesting people who come in here that have been leaders this question. What is the number one lesson in leadership you have learned through all the things that you've done as an entrepreneur? Number one lesson in leadership is... The number one lesson in leadership is, is that sometimes you have to walk alone as a leader. Sometimes you may have a vision. You may see something that other people can't. You may be able to see around the corner where other people can only just see straight forward. And as a leader, you have to have faith in yourself and enough uh, mission, enough passion to be able to pursue that, even when others may not see it. How about everybody else tells you you're crazy? Well, then it's up to you to convince everyone else that they're crazy too and to join you. I love it. Finally, what is next for Digital Undivided? Well, we're really excited. We're actually raising a VC fund um, to be able to fund our companies. We're really excited about that. We have a couple of programs we're doing out west. We're doing a program in New York City. Um, we have our weekly did tech talks, which are tech conversations we have on Twitter. Uh, we have a new project we have called Project Diane, which is named after the civil rights leader Diane Nash, mm. who is very, very influential in civil rights, but not many people know her. And it's all about gathering information on top companies that are founded or co-founded by black and Latino women founders. You have come a long way from that interview 20 years ago when you were a uh, budding student at Rutgers University, and uh, we're proud of you. Thank you so much. You make everyone at Rutgers proud. Thank you. It's great to be Keep here. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Stay right there. This is one-on-one, -on -one, fascinating people talking about important things. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey. TD Bank, New Jersey Institute of Technology, New Jersey Natural Gas, MagnaCare, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by Verizon Communications. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.